Hey guys, I have the pleasure of just talking about the Word of God with you again here today. Um, today, Highway, I hope you guys are good. And as we're going to do Wednesday service and talk about the passage for today, let's pray right before we get into it. And uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, for every single person who's here. As we get into your Word, Lord, would you please speak to us? Your Word has the words of life, truth, and uh, the words that give us faith. And I pray, God, that you would. Uh, speak unto our hearts, and that we would open up our hearts as we listen to it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, man, it's like over three months now that we're doing these things online. Are you getting used to it? I'm not used to it. I don't want to get used to it. But hey, we got to make do with what we can. We got to make sure that we read the Word of God still together. And today, it's going to be on the screen right now. And as it is the 24th, we're going through Deuteronomy chapter 23. And in the New Testament, we're going to go through Romans chapter 3. I want to let you know, make sure you guys do both the Old Testament and the New Testament together. But today, in Romans chapter 3, we're going to go through a couple of different passages together. In Romans chapter 3, in verse 23, it says this, For everyone has sinned, we fall short of the glorious, God's glorious standards. Yet God, in His grace, freely makes us right in His sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when He freed us from the penalty for our sins. You know, no matter what you do, you fall short. Until, compared to God's standards, you fall short. Some people might think, you know what? I know I've sinned a lot, but I'm going to go on to missions. Great. Wonderful. But still, it doesn't take away the fact that you have sinned. Some people might say, you know what? I'm going to become a pastor. I'm going to become a teacher. I'm going to, I'm going to go to the highway and do a bunch of activities. And I'm going to serve over there in the body worship team and the praise team. Great. But you got to understand, you fall short. No matter what, you fall short. You can spend your dying from now to your dying breath. Even... Maybe let's say like a thousand, you were born a thousand years ago and from then till a thousand years later, you live to serve God. Great. You know what? You still fall short. You and I were sinners. And this passage tells us that, that we fall short of God's glorious standards. But the great thing is this. God, he makes us right in his sight. He makes us right in His sight. And how is that? Through Jesus Christ. You know, Highway, I've done pastoring for a little while and to youth. And one of the things that I ask all the time is, hey, who in here feels like, you know, after they die, they're going to go to hell? Who in here wants to go to heaven? And a lot of people say, I, I don't know if I'm going to go to heaven. I think I'm going to go to hell. And I say, why? Well, because I did this, and I did that, and I did this. I've sinned a lot. I get that. I do get that. So how do you go to heaven? Some people think that if you've done something wrong, that you got to do something right. For example, you lied to your parents. What happens when you get caught? Oh, you get a big spanking, don't you? You have to get your punishment. Sometimes you want an iPhone so bad. And then you're, you tell your parents, Mom, Dad, I really want this iPhone. What can we do? What can we do? Your parents say, you know what? For a month, two months, three months, five months, six months, do the dishes. Do this, do that. One of our students in the highway recently bragged he got the Nintendo Switch. Great. What did you have to do? Maybe, maybe, I don't know. He worked. He did a lot of stuff in order for him to get that Switch. You see, there is like a payment that we can pay in order for us to receive something. And for some reason, we think, well, you know, we messed up. But we think that in order for us to go to heaven, we must pay. And that payment has to come in some form of suffering. And, some, and that feeling has to come afterwards. But this is a thing. When you're saved, it's not really a feeling thing. It's a faith thing. When you're saved, it's a belief thing. It's not a work thing. You can't work for it. If you can work for it, 
then a person can say, ha ha, I received it because I did all of this work and you didn't. But it's not meant for that. It's not for work. That's what you did. But salvation is not about what you did. It's about what Jesus Christ has done. It's, it's not a feeling thing. When you're born again through Jesus Christ and believing in Jesus Christ, it's not that you turn from the color blue to the color red. It's not. It's not that you feel happy and super sad or something like that. It's not about a feeling. It's about this faith. I have faith that God has saved me. By the way, we all fall short. No matter what you do, you will fall short. But God has given us this wonderful grace, wonderful gift of salvation, that whoever believes in His Son, Jesus Christ, can be saved. So let's praise the Lord for that. You get it? I hope you do. And because of that, because of this grace that God has given us, this gift that God has given us, even though we didn't deserve it, we should really spend the rest of our lives in thanksgiving. And that is why we serve, because He has given us something that we don't deserve, and we give in return our lives. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this grace, this undeserved kindness, this undeserved gift that we ever see. That through your Son, Jesus Christ, we have salvation. I pray, God, that Highway would understand that. In Jesus' name, amen. Highway, I love you guys. Catch you guys again. Bye-bye.